Hi, I'm Professor Sarah Harris, and I am a faculty member in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department here at UNLV. I got my PhD and master's at Stanford University, and then I became a faculty member at Harvard Med College, and I was there for 10 years until joining the faculty here at UNLV in 2014. So what is electrical and computer engineering? Well, it turns out it's actually two majors, electrical engineering and computer engineering. We're in the same department because there's a lot of overlap. So for example, my degrees are in, um, my undergraduate was in electrical and computer engineering and my PhD and masters were in the electrical engineering department. But, you know, it's all very, very related. So let's talk about um, what these majors are. Uh, one of the big things that we do as computer engineers is design processors. So um, here's a picture of the Intel processor here at the top, the Intel i5. And uh, here's an NVIDIA processor, a graphics processor. It has a big fan on it because it's really power hungry and generates a lot of heat. Um, and so these are, you know, this, the, the Intel processor and processors like these are in our, our PCs and our computers and in your smartphone and the other tens of devices that you've already interacted with today. So they're really the core of these systems. They're the kind of brains of the system. And here's um, one of these systems, a robot, and it has a processor that's controlling, well, you know, what should I, what should I do next? Well, there's a wall in front of you. There's some sensor input that says, hey, I detect that you're about to run into something. And so then the processor says, okay, there's some algorithm that says, okay, well then turn, turn away from the wall so that you don't hit it. And so this, um, this kind of hardware software interface is really the key of computer engineering. So if you like hardware, which is these processors and um, robots and devices, right? These things, hardware that you can touch um, and software. So software is programming like C or Java. This is a, a kind of the overlap of those two. In electrical engineering, we're going to focus on, well, the, the hardware and the, the signals. So signals being the analog signals. Or is it 1.1 instead of digital signals, which are one or zero analog signals? We actually want to know the specific value, 1.12, 1.13. And so, for example, here's a picture of some signal down here, and these are the components of that signal. And by detecting the components, we can figure out some information about that. So, for example, here is a, um, a graphic signal, right? Here's our, um, our image. And by filtering or processing that signal, we can tell some things about that image. So we can maybe do some facial recognition or we can detect the emotions of that, of that individual. Is that person happy? Are they sad, um, et cetera? And so we're really in electrical engineering focusing on the hardware and the signals. So let's look at some of the things we can do with electrical and computer engineering. So here's an example. This is the Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics. It's, it's pretty impressive. It does some things that would be even hard for a human to do. Right? Pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty sure I can do that, right? Pretty awesome. So, so I show this to show some of the things that you can do with an electrical and computer engineering degree. So sometimes we 
especially as we're beginning and just like reading, you're learning the letters and you're kind of like, oh, you know, what's the point of this? Well, there's some amazing stuff that you can do by learning these fundamentals. And so keeping that perspective kind of helps you as, as you go along. So let's talk about the CPE courses. Um, 100, 200, these are the basic courses, digital design, digital logic, the fundamentals of how do we build these circuits to you know, do these kind of more complex things like processors, which is CP300, and the microcontrollers um, for, for controlling robots and other devices, and then uh, a hardware description languages, how we can use languages to just describe these circuits. And then after those core courses, you'll take some um, you know, kind of cho choice courses where you get to choose among um, some courses like computer architecture, um, chip design, internet security, machine learning, to name a few. And double E's, so electrical engineers, also take um, these courses and they um, take one of these, you know, 300, 301, or 302. So there's, as I said, an overlap between these, between these, these uh, majors, between double E, electrical engineering, and, and computer engineering. And so um, here's some double E courses. We have 220, 221. Um, these are the kind of fundamental courses where we get to build kind of the, the basic circuits with resistors and capacitors. And, you know, even with these, uh, you know, and again, if those words don't mean anything, you will learn about them in those courses. But with these kind of simple um, elements, we can actually build pretty complex circuits, like filtering out a signal we don't want. So, for example, in um, many signals have 60 hertz noise because of our electricity, right? Our electricity is in electrical signal, right? And that 60 hertz signal tends to kind of corrupt or add noise to the signals of interest, the signals we want. And so we can build uh, using analog circuits a filter to get that 60 hertz noise out, that signal out of our, out of our signal that we really want. Um, and then electronics, electromagnetism, um, signals and systems. These are um, the follow-on courses. And then choices, uh, choice courses. So, for example, you can focus on renewable energy or digital communications, control systems, image processing, and you kind of get to focus on, on what area of electrical engineering you want to focus on. And as before, um, there's overlap. The CP majors for, take these first uh, 220, 221, and 320. So what kind of jobs would you get? If you're an electrical and computer engineering, uh, engineering major. So here's some uh, example companies, Intel, Raytheon, SpaceX, NVIDIA, um, NV Energy, JT4, just to name a few, right? NV Energy and JT4 are local. Um, MSTS is also local. And you know, bunches, a bunch of companies that, that hire uh, in, this, in this area. And you know, beyond industry, what about research? So um, here's an example project uh, that I'm working on. So we're building a, a dynamic control platform that basically is an active control for a prosthetic ankle. So here on the left, we can see a passive prosthetic device, which is basically a leaf spring, where you've probably seen it in the, in the Olympics, where um, the person you know, lands on it and the, the spring effect bounces them, you know, propels them forward, as opposed to um, active prosthetics, as shown here on the right, where there's, um, you know, a motor um, and sensors kind of actuating that, um, that movement. And so why, why this project? Well, um, it, you know, it's a very interesting application of um, embedded systems that it can apply to robotics as well. And if you know, it can improve the lives of, of, of people um, who need these devices and make it more comfortable, make them more uh, easily able to move, and um, you know, in many ways, make their lives better. And so I have a few tips for success, success as you start your career, um, whatever engineering major it is, um, show up. And so if you're watching this video, you can check that that um, that box right there. Good job, right? It's especially hard, I think, in this virtual um, kind of you know place we are at right now to show up. Do it. It's very important, right? If if you don't show up, the you know it's it's already you've, you've, it's lost. There have been times when I um, had an interview I didn't feel quite ready for. I showed up, 
And you know, often I, I got the I got the position. If I hadn't shown up, I definitely wouldn't have. Next one is turn in your assignments. Every time, right? If you don't turn one in, guess what? The next one's gonna be harder to do because now you have two where that last one's already hard. And then, you know, third weekend, now you have three and now you're just, it's overwhelming, right? You have so much to do, it's hard, you know, to do anything. So turn in your assignments um, every single time. Try to turn them in early. And ideally get help on them before you turn them in. That's a win, 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 right? So then you get help on it, you kind of understood it, Maybe you just turn it in that way. Okay, well, kind of understand it. You go to office hours and you say, hey, I don't quite get this. Can you help me with it? And you get some help on it. And then you, um, after, you've, after you've done that, you get your you know, 90 plus percent on it, confidence. Now you're like, I could, I'm pretty sure I got that. I got a good grade on that. Going to the exam, you have more confidence. You understand it better. Get help before you turn them in. Go to office hours. You know, email your professor, whatever way is best. Going to office hours is usually the best, even if they're virtual. Ask questions early and often. Really no dumb questions. If you have it, ask it. Get to know your classmates. Um, there are some opportunities here, you know, in the virtual kind of world that we're in right now to get to know your classmates, do that. And then when you, we get to go back in person for, you know, uh, for our, all, of, all of our classes, talk to your classmates, get to know them a bunch of resources of their experience and their understanding that, that will be a big um, benefit to you and to each other. And some classes can be tough, it's worth it. Keep that, that long-term perspective in mind. And finally, enjoy the journey.